Hello, thanks for coming. Uh, I got some comments uh, yesterday from some people that came to talk about with me about yeah, you're doing active records with Sleek and very active records is not that popular and uh, I can imagine that it's not that popular for most people and uh, I'll try to show why with Sleek can be interesting. And uh, in Scala Days this year, I gave a presentation about this subject. I call it different, but it was more how to forget where I am and model it different and persist your data a different way. And, uh, and then I present a small library that arose that I call it uh, Active Slick. Uh, if I have some time, I will show it. But what I will do today is uh, show step by step uh, how I implement it. It's very simple, actually. Uh, uh, and also the motivation of doing such a thing. So my name is Kanato Gerhard Cavalcanti, Cavalcanti is how I pronounce it. Uh, I'm founder of the Scala user group, the Belgian Scala user group. I have a small company that I founded recently with uh, Luc de Ponchil, which is a guy from Belgium that is busy with uh, functional programming for quite some time. And uh, I'm originally a psychologist, and I came to Europe, by the way I'm Brazilian, and I came to Europe to study philosophy, and uh, I started programming to pay my studs, and and then I, yeah, uh, <laughs> there are there are a lot of people that have done psychology, philosophy, pedagogy, and they end up doing programming, uh, and phys physicians, and, and so on. Anyway, uh, by the way, my associate Luc de Ponchi is mathematician, and uh, he really understands things about functional programming. Quite different than me, for, for, <laughs> for instance. And I'm a developer for 15 years now, more or less. So uh, I plan to do some live coding, but then when I was trying at home, I realized that it would be very boring because I do a lot of mistakes. So what I do, what I will do, there is a, this project in uh, GitHub you can check out and you can follow if you want. And uh, I will be using a, a plugin, a SPT plugin from Heiko. It's called uh, Row, uh, Git Row, and uh, basically you can start it at the beginning of the commit, the, 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 on the first commit, and instead of code everything, I will jump to the next step on each uh, on each step, uh, and uh, and then you can follow the code. Then I will show why I implemented everything and and so on. So basically, uh, the main. There were two points in my presentation at Scala Days, and basically one of the points that is what I try to show here is that when you're doing Slick, you have to embrace your roles and realize that what you're doing is manipulating your roles in memory in Scala, but in both of them. So your case class are isomorphic to your tables, and that's how Slick works with projections of the case class. Of your, it takes a... Uh, uh, result set from, from database and, and insert on your case class and manipulate it. Uh, you do your clone, you modify that, and you send it back to sleep. And, and then I thought, okay, that's really a role that is representing memory and like a record. And so Active Record is a good pattern for that. Uh, so here we are talking about a naming model, uh, uh, model with pure data. And if you want to do more DDD, well, one way of, to, of doing that is to have another class that is your aggregate that has all the methods that manipulates that and you deal with your records as pure database records. And, and, uh, and there are some basic things that you need to do is to manipulate the data in memory, data that you have to synchronize with the database, or the crude operations. Well, basic, very basic thing. No? And uh, they are tightly related with the, the object life cycle. What, what is that? What, what I mean with that is you start a case, you initialize a case class, it does not have an ID, for instance, if it's an entity, you save it, you need to put an ID there. And so now I know that this case class was persisted, and then at some point I want to delete it, some point I want to update it. That's basically the, the crude operations or the object life cycle. And then in case of entities, IDs are crucial. So that's not yet the case. So now I do the demo, I will show the code. Uh, turn on. Okay. So 
No, I, I, I think it's not necessary unless you want to record it. Maybe I will try to. Uh, so there is this project, what I will do. Here I will start an SVT, and here uh, I have a red one. And the growth cookie, which is in that project, shows you all the states. So we start here with the easier states, if you can see. I don't know if it's readable. Uh, you maybe switch the background to white. Yeah. and I will just run my favorite here and I'll show what, what it is. So what I'm doing here, do we change the background here as well? Or? It's okay. No, okay. That's okay. It's okay? So okay. let's see uh, what we have. Some infrastructure, uh, some uh, first model, conference. Okay. Uh, this is less readable, maybe. Okay, let's put. Uh, I think we put it. Is it is okay if we put it in presenter mode, like the previous speaker? Yes, but uh, they do not change the the index highlight. Let's find out. I know. <laughs> I put a. Uh, uh, it's, it's okay. It's, it's okay. Screen is okay. So conference uh, names, location, and an option for ID. Okay. And then I have here uh, my DB, but I, where I have a hard code as a driver. I think that I, this is not necessary. I think I put it here because of another project where I took it. But okay. Anyway, I have this apply method that will run that code in, in a transaction that's trivial. And I have my schema, which is just how we know it. I'm just mapping this table with a sleek table. And I have this, uh, well, what's that? And I have this sleek app that is taking the conference, which uh, in the schema is the table query, it's okay. And it's just adding three conference. But, and then I treat it to this. So, but what happens is that the type here is not my conference, the type that we see here is the, is the int, integer, which is the number of rows that were returned by this insert. And if I want to get a conference that has an ID, I have to do some manipulations. And that's what we can see on the next, uh, next step. So grow, initially you have this list where you see all the steps. And, uh, and if you do grow next, moves to the next uh, piece of code. You see that it's recompiling. And uh, now I have the first one, I'm still returning the ID, the, the number of inserted rows, and the two others I'm returning already something that has an assigned ID. For the first one is just, I've got a sum of two, because there's the second uh, uh, row inserted and sum of three. But how you do that in stick? is actually, uh, let's ignore this one for the moment. That's how we have to do that. So here I have a Scala conference, Scala exchange enrollment. That's real the types conference. And then I have to call conference returning conference map ID. And then I add it to this, uh, uh, I call the, the plus equals method here. And then what I got, get here is the ID of this conference, which is, yeah, it's a long, okay? And then I have to take my conference to a copy of it and put the sum. And now I have a Scala, Scala exchange here now has this ID. That's a lot of work and they do tedious work as well. And, uh, and then there is also, well, here we are doing three separate steps. You can do that in one step by the conference Join conference map ID and then into and then you pass a, a function that does the copy. So we are doing one line, we are doing everything. And 
here I'm getting scala day here as also the ID. And that's why on the here I'm seeing those two conference here is now what I, I'm getting here is a conference with an ID. It looks like closure, you know, lots of parentheses and lots of things that I have to do. Well, the thing is that uh, why why it's like that? Uh, well, it's nice that Stefan is here, maybe he can explain. But my guess is about maybe maybe it's possible to let Slick do that it for you if you provide a little bit more information. Maybe in a, one day it will be able to do that. But what I would do actually is provide this information in a type safe way and try to reduce this uh, boilerplate. And what happens, so the reason is that you have this table with an ID and you have a case class with an ID, but although you map it in this uh, uh, class here in the, in, the, in the schema, there is no link between this ID and the ID inside my conference. The link is not happening here. It happens by projection. The, the value get there, or it's written from there by projection, not because we took field for the field is that this one is this one, this one is this one. That's not that, how it happens. So I need to have something that will introduce this information. So the first thing to do is to, uh, by the way, this is not that complicated. So I, took, I tried different ways of doing that. I show you the last version that I have. But you can do the same and uh, you don't even need to include another library in your project. You can take uh, what I'm doing here and just repeat yourself in your project and do something a little bit different. And, uh, so the next thing is that I'm introducing here an ID table, uh, which is my extension of the table. Okay? And uh, this ID table has a column ID of long. Of course, we will improve on that because I'm, I'm forcing you to have an idea of your own. So uh, we improve on that step by step. So now I have an idea of long, and I have an ID table query that get, gets an ID table of M, which is my model, and uh, and then I add some methods extra. The add one contains this boilerplate, and it calls this with ID method. This with ID method does what the function that I pass to the input methods does actually to the cost of my model, okay? And I override this method, I didn't override, I define it on my table query because on the on slick it's added by implicit conversion. Now I'm defining so that's why I don't need the override. And uh, so I get the same results. And, uh, And on my table here, on my slick app, I just have to do the, I'm doing the same, use the same simplex, and now I'm getting the, the, my model with an ID. But of course, that's not what we want to do, that's too limited. Because what we, I want is to be able to provide another ID for this log, for this uh, ID case to be able to say uh, it's an int or it's a string or a new ID, whatever, whatever. And uh, so I have to force a little bit more. But, but for doing that, I have to add complexity here because I need more information to have a base column type, as we see. And actually, to reduce boilerplate, I will insert boilerplate, but in another form. And then later on, we will clean up and, and, and reduce the boilerplate once again. So the next step, well, actually not. That's not the next step. I'm not doing that yet. On that step, I'm already able to show you that we have an active record. And an active record, I mean, is I have a conference that, as I said, it represents my role. And I can just call save on it. And it will call my, my, my insert. Well, that's just you know, it's an option. We don't need to do that, of course. You could have uh, done, like in the previous example, I could have said, okay, here a uh, conference, uh, I could stay like that. But because I have already uh, a point where I know that I, I can call and get everything done for me again, I have a safe method as well on my case class. And of course, the safe method is not there. The safe method, The 
specific method is being added to my conference class. I have here a implicit class that, that implements active record. And the only thing that I have to give here is my table query. Okay? And uh, what I did as well here, I have a, I put everything on in this extensions. So I have again my ID table is still long. I put a safe method on the base ID table queries, just uh, an intermediate uh, class that I will use. And now my ID table query implemented. But I have add more things. Here I have an extracted method that you have to implement yourself and the brief ID. On the previous example I only had the brief ID because I was only interested to, to add things. Now I'm, the safe method it does add and or update if you have already an ID. It does an update. If you don't have it, it, it does the same. Okay? So just some infrastructure, some code that I put to, to make it easier to, to implement. And then this is active record where I need a model, a table query, and I, I add a safe method to, to the conference. So that's it, I have it. But if you, if you see the schema, there are two things here. I have to implement this brief ID. I have that tells me how I can to a clone of my database of my model with an ID and I have the extract ID that can give me back an ID. <coughs> and I have to implement the ID table query that way. In Slick you have a macro that does that for you. But uh, at that stage we could have a macro that does that as well. But we go in that direction that you make it impossible. I explained why we and uh, and then I can define as well uh, conference record is the the active record extension for the conference. Okay. So having having this information gives me the possibility to do uh, other stuff because I have now a, a known call that has the ID. I can uh, I can have a deleted method. I can have find uh, filter by ID that's very useful for the list and so on. I can have a find by ID, find option by ID. I can add this one, which is a great one, like which means take everything that you have in a database, use database, put <coughs> in memory, and, and trash everything. Uh, but it's an option, you don't have to do that. Okay. Uh, and I extend my active direct with deleted. And on the, my app now, I can do find by ID, delete, and so on. So basically, I have my own version of a table and a table query that adds this information from it. But I still have this long loop, and I don't want to have it, so I want to, to, to improve on that. So uh, on the next step, we'll take that out. We'll put a generic on it. So, but then it gets complicated, because I mean, if you, if you have a, a generic type on your column, you need to have a base column type for it. And I'm asking to the compiler to find one on the, on the scope using a context, uh, uh, context bound. And I, I also need that in the ID table query. So, and when, and when I define my schema, I have to, to define that as well. I have to say it's a conference and it's a long, the ID is a, uh, is a long, and uh, when I define the ID table query, I have to define the model, the ID of the uh, uh, type of my ID, and the table, and well, I added lots of information here, a compilation for, to, to link the table column with my ID, to avoid the research. So, I'm adding complexity, but then I'm not a bad. Well, you can improve on that, of course. Next step is to create an entity. And uh, if I go to the <coughs> conference, conference now implements the entity. And it's still, we still have complexity, un unnecessary complexity here, but you also remove it. So what I have now is an entity that has that parameter that is itself. Because I need it to return the <coughs> And I have the ID, not as a parameter here, you could say that that is the ID, but uh, that's not what I'm doing. I'm oh, sorry. There is an ID that is the, uh, an 
deny that it's the ID, but I'm not doing that here because it will give me trouble later on. So I'm using why. I'm putting it as a type parameter. And as you see here, I'm uh, type, type ID. And I'm accessing it via type projection. Why I need that? I need it because when I do the mapping, I want to be able, what I want in that case here is to remove the type parameter from the ID table. And the way of to do that, it's getting bigger here, is that uh, I would like that maybe it's easier to, leave, to read. I'm access, accessing the ID via type projection. So when I use that table, I only have to say to give my model. And my model only has to implement entity. Okay? So I implement it like that now, I define that my conference is an entity, it has an idea of long, and I implement it with ID method. Complex. I think it's too much. I want to reduce this boilerplate in the beginning, but I have all the kind of things that you have to repeat yourself over and over again. But that gives me already, not, by the way, the code is just continue doing the same thing. I save the conference, I get one by ID, I delete it one, and I print the others. So I, this is what I will not change anymore. This is this big uh, app here, and we are just now improving behind the implementation. So the schema now, because I have this type value as inside the entity, I cannot, an ID table is expecting an entity, and do, doing the, defining the, the base code type type projection of the ID. Now I can do just that. I say ID table is conference. Because conference is an entity. Okay, so I have everything now. And that's just to introduce to be able to do CRUD without repeating that myself over and over again. If I have one long model class, fine, you do it and and uh, and you can you just make your own table. But you have many, you don't want to repeat that over and over again. So you need to have some uh, abstractions over that. So, uh, so what I have more is that if we look to that, what we have here, just, okay, we have two more steps. Uh, the other thing that I have done on this library, and uh, I will do that here now, is that uh, I decided to use the kick pattern to inter in inject the driver on my uh, mapping. Here I'm putting it hard coded. I could have used the same technique they use in uh, play stick. In play stick, they have an import that, much like a play current, what, has, what, what is there behind? So just an option that is filled when you start the application. And they have a config driver that is filled with the driver that is configured in the application is there. And that's a good solution if you want to need to connect to one database with, this, with the same drive, with one drive. If you have to connect to two databases with two different drives, you cannot do that anymore because you cannot have two drives in the school. And, uh, and then when I decide to make that library more, I, I use that for a project and then I said, okay, I make it open source and maybe some people can be interested. Then, okay, but what I do here, I have to make it easy for other people to, to choose what they do, and then the kick pattern is the best way to do that. Although people don't like it, and people don't like uh, active rapid pattern, they don't like uh, kick pattern, and I mix both here. And some people don't like the, my library uh, pattern, but uh, I'm also doing with the same method on the conference, so I mix all the, uh, the least popular uh, patterns in Scala world. And, uh, okay, so on the next step, I will just, uh, I just implement the the kick button, so what was an object is now a trait that gets a profile, the profile is defined by driver. I think you guys know how, how this things work. Okay? So everything became now uh, uh, is inside the cake, and I have, I think I call it slick cake, where I put everything and I'm giving the driver. That is hard code, but that's just the example. You know, of course, it's not hard code. Uh, so okay, that's just just to say that the, the library that I'm providing, you have to use kick pattern, and that's the reason. 
Why, why do you have to? Because to build the mappings that I'm building, I need to have a driver in the scope. I cannot, have, I cannot use the base column type without the driver in the scope, for instance. Right? And that's the reason why I cannot provide uh, a macro for the ID, uh, ID table query. You have to code them all, because I cannot have a macro that, is, uh, that will depend on the driver. I cannot have a macro inside the tree. Well, that's what I discovered so far. Maybe someone with more experience with macro can say, no, you can, you have to do like that. Feel free to contact me, because I want to, to learn that. But as, as far as I understand, it's not possible. But, uh, okay, there is one more thing. Um, uh, let's say that this cherry on the top of the cake, like we say uh, here in, in French. And uh, so now we have a cake, and let's put the cherry on it. And uh, I will go, I think it's here. Let's take this extension. Remember, I'm forcing you to define, well, because I did, I forgot to show that, but from, from the moment that I have an entity, I don't have to define this track ID anymore because I know where is the ID of the entity. But I still have to define in the entity the reef ID. But why I need this uh, extract ID and reef ID is just because there is a field on my display that I want to change and the same field that I want to take out. And what we do, what we use when we want to do that? And we want to collect a field from a case class, we can change a field in a case class. If we also use the copy. No. Basically, that's a lens. That's the functionality that you have in a lens. So you can put a lens that will do the grip idea and extract idea for you. It's a very simple lens. That's it's very specific only for the ID. Okay? So um, I added here on a pencil on monocle. I was between the should, I was choosing between shapeless or the monocle example. I think monocle has a better syntax, so I put monocle. I don't want to add monocle, although it's a very nice library. I don't want to add it to active state. So I will create my home and my macro and just copy and paste uh, from the implementation. Because I don't need all the functionalities there, I just need macro for one specific. So I, we can reduce that as well, and let's say, let's see how is the entity now. Because the only thing that I need is to have the type of my ID. I don't care for the rest. You remember the previous one? Was that? Oh, and now I have. I even not forcing you to say that your field is called ID. You just have to define a type for it. Okay? But now, reloading pieces. I have, I need a lot of pieces. Remember, I have here the ID table column. Uh, actually, it's here. On the ID table query, I need a base column type and the simple lens, which is the uh, monocle lens that I'm encoding as I need a lens for M, the option of M ID. Okay? And uh, then I'm just using it further. So when, whenever I need the, the extract of the lens of my ID, I'm using ID lens get. So this is the ID lens. Give me the ID, and whenever I need to set it, I use it here. And now, when I define it, I need in my scope a lens for my ID, and that's how you, you generate it using mono, monocle. You say lenser, conference, and the ID. And that makes that my ID table now is very sleek. I only need to have the model. I only have to define a lens, I have it implicitly, and I have, a, which is very easy syntax to remember, the, the shape lens one, I think, 
is something like that conference uh, and then a symbol. Yeah, apparently this one is better. You can compose this one and uh, the answer, I don't know. I, I didn't know. study that further compare. I was only looking on the, uh, the syntax, which is the easiest to remember. And I thought that this one is the best one. And, uh, and I provide my own lens conference ID. By the way, you can hear now say that it's not an ID because uh, can just say doesn't matter, doesn't matter anymore because IntelliJ does really good at reflection. And uh, you do what it wants and I'm not forcing you anymore to do the ID, uh, to call it ID. I just need an answer. And uh, so a little bit more about that's uh, more or less everything that you can do that you have to do to have to put all this complexity behind. But there are some consequences here. You have to use a pattern. But I think in most cases you use at least a anyway. Uh, you need to define uh, uh, a lens, and you have to your model has to implement. But I think it's okay if you only, if you don't have that inside, it, because the only thing that we're needing here is the type projection to have a type projection of your ID card, and there is no functionality, there is no method implemented. Uh, there is one more thing that I added recently on this library is uh, version. So for optimistic uh, logging, uh, so there are basically two tables: ID table and ID version. The idea, and then you have to mix in two threads, the identity and the versionable. I think uh, there I call it identifiable and versionable. So I have symmetry in the kind of the names. And then it does what the uh, optimistic log does. Uh, if you try to update something, I check the version. If the version was changed already, then you get uh, an exception. And uh, what I also add to that there is that uh, you can, for all the the active record has, for every method I have saved, delete, and update, if you want to be explicit, also add, if you want to explicitly say that you're inserting, and you have the version with try, where you get a try, uh, scala with your try. But there is one problem to doing that, is that the stick will uh, roll back your transaction if it catches an exception. But if you return a try, it will not catch you. You're catching you except yourself, and if you will not see it, then you're not rollback. But then what I did is inside the code, my library, whenever I call the try method, the try version of the method, I have a block that takes whatever you pass, uh, you execute it, and if it, the try returns a failure, I take it because I have the session left. I need to have the session. And then I do the world map. But actually, uh, it's something that would be better to be done uh, in Slick. But uh, I think it will come in very soon. Who builds Slick? I don't know. <laughs> 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 yeah, but uh, I had a talk with Stefan about that. And uh, uh, yeah, maybe something that will come in. But you're doing the right thing right now. If you call yeah. rollback, it will not roll back the session at that point. It will just mark it for rollback yeah. later when it exits the block. Yeah. So that's, that's yeah. exactly the right thing. Yeah, but I, I have one. Well, maybe it's a border case, but it, it, it's possible that I do uh, try delete, try another delete, and then I have I compose them on a full comprehension, and then I have something that may be a failure. And then I can say, okay, but if I got a failure here, I want to. Uh, uh, recover and do some other stuff, and then my transactions already uh, marked for uh, uh, rollback. But uh, well, uh, the news, if I, I don't know if I can announce it, is that in the new version of Slick, we have a kind of action that you have to implement yourself, and then you decide how you handle the exceptions, uh, when you commit, when you don't commit, and then there you can have like uh, what you want. You can even say. I don't use tries, I use uh, Scala Z validation, 
and then from there, you, if you've got a failure, you decide. At the last moment, when you decide not to recover, if your failure uh, uh, reaches the action there, you decide to roll back. So the, the library will stay like that, and maybe in the next release of Sleek, uh, I will provide something that makes more sense to, to, to improve on that. Uh, so Finish on 40 or 45? I don't know. So, okay. Uh, so the code for this presentation is that Slick Active Record, and the Active Slick library is on uh, Active. Uh, this is both uh, GitHub uh, uh, repositories, and for short, to make it short, I put the PG URL. Uh, there is also an activator template now for Active Slick. So just do uh, slick, uh, I think the name is slick-active-record. Just search for that. And it, it integrates with play uh, slick. So you get a play application with a very simple controller and a cruise operation. And uh, well, this is, I have to know that well, we are doing transaction, we are blocking, and uh, it's not kind of, maybe not the kind of application we are building. And I think that if you're doing database, you have to take it into account. I was not in your talk uh, where you did uh, Slick as well. I don't know how you show that because in Scala days uh, I didn't went to, to the Slick part, so I don't know how you do with Slick. I was there in Scala days, but not on the uh, blocking. Yeah, I don't know how you do uh, your talk about. Uh, well, maybe, maybe we can talk about it. I think Slick, slick tree will have an option for not blocking. Yeah, if you have not blocking. So basically right now you construct a future and a blocking block and an execution step there. Yeah. Which is not ideal but uh, it, up it to now it's works. Not, yeah. Yeah. We're sure. trying to make it more efficient and slick free. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's it. Uh, I think we still have like 10 minutes for questions. Or suggestions. Or passion. One interesting question would be how to come with the release in Slick. Can you ask that question? Yes. Uh, well, the question is how many of you are using Slick? Okay. And how many of you think that active record is a bad idea? <laughs> 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 Disconnected representation of the role, and uh, and what I don't like on the active record is that it is uh, it mixes uh, your database logic with your model. But here we are not talking anymore about a complex uh, rich model. We are talking about a data type that represents your table of your your role, and uh, your case class is actually not contaminated. The saved method is being added with the deep my library. And then I think it's uh, it's okay. But uh, by the way, you don't, it's called an active slick because it started with this idea of doing active record. But you don't need to. You don't need to put a, a, an extension for your case class that has the save map. You can always call conference dot add or dot save, and you uh, don't need to. But, uh, that's how I started, and that's uh, that's why I choose that name as well. In the beginning, I had uh, my the first version of that that I used in production, still running production. Uh, I had kind of DAO, and where I had to pass an, a table query to it, and the DAO had a lot of methods. And later on, I said, okay, but so the table query and certain Slick too is a kind of DAO. It has all those methods, uh, not all those methods exactly. That otherwise, I would not have to do it. Uh, but it has already methods for, for manage your, your, your roles. So I said, okay, I should not be a table, but I have to reach the table plan. And then initially I got, I made an extension with people, my library of table planners. But it got complex in many ways. And uh, IntelliJ was not liking the fact that I had.
had uh, extensions because I, uh, I was mixing. <coughs> if I want to call a table that was using another table and then there were extension of this one with the extension of the other one, it's working. The compiler is okay with that, but IntelliJ was not seeing the code. And, uh, and actually, deep my library pattern, it's heavy, it put pressure. So I said, okay, I do an, uh, an abstracted class, I did table, or something else, and then I don't have a, a, a I don't have to pimp uh, the, I have the stick table or the table plan. So I move this to a real implementation, and I'm very much, I prefer much more this one than the one with the extensions. It's not seen. Uh, I have two minutes more, according to my... Uh, <laughs> does it have the, the, the 22 uh, TV edition that you have? Well, uh, it, it's, I'm using here SDIC 2.1, uh, but now in the, you, can use, uh, you can use the HLIST uh, in SDIC. So, no, but it uh, doesn't matter, because uh, in our case here, uh, in our case here, we are only dealing with the fact of connecting this ID for my case class. So how many fields you have on your table or in your case class, doesn't matter, but you can. Uh, so actually, actually, it's only that part that's of interest here. You can put whatever you want. There are other things as well. Huh? If, you, if, you, if you're doing that, and let's say that that's what is also powerful in Slick. And uh, we can also do that in Ibernate, for instance. Oh, I should not compare Slick with Ibernate because it's not <laughs> <laughs> <So>, Sorry. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, the thing is, what we, you can decide just to take the name, to, to query the name. But of course, when you do that, you are disconnecting from your ID. And if you say, OK, I will change the name. And I, I get the I, I want the ID, so you select the ID and the name, and you put on a tuple, and you go further to something. Well, and you want to update it. So I think it's a kind of strange. You probably want to serialize everything. Uh, to deserialize everything. So it's uh, you have to if you have a huge table with lots of columns. Yeah, this is when you have a model that is very clear. You take it, you save, you do some manipulation and save it back. If you are joining and doing some other stuff and later on with it, we want to save it back. Yeah, and then uh, you have to keep track of your ID. And uh, I thought having like a kind of pattern that you can use for this kind of thing, like you initialize, you take parts of some columns and you, you get with, and you ask it to have those columns, the ID in a wrapper and then from this wrapper, I know how to, to update it. But I have to experiment that. I think it can be very difficult, and I don't know if I will do that. But I can like, accept the pull request. And the same for the version. If you have the version you have, you have to add here a uh, dev version. And the version is just a long. Uh, you don't choose the type, because then I have, to, I have to control that myself, how I implement it. So I just say it's a, it's a long. Not a hint, so I don't know if you're here for the brand uh, <laughs> talk. I choose wrong. And it's just like that. And, uh, more questions? <laughs>